All right. Thank you all for showing up. We're going to do this. All right. Here we go. These nuts. Dan, let's just do this. I have no idea what I'm doing. There have been at least 11 mass shootings this Memorial Day weekend, according to the Washington Post. That's as of Sunday. A mass shooting is defined as four or more people shot or killed, not including the shooter. As of Sunday, since the massacre of those school children in Uvalde, Texas, 10 Americans have been killed, 61 injured in mass shootings, and that is lowballing the number. I'll have more, a lot more to say about the shooting in Texas in just a moment and then at the end of the show. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, was arrested in California's Napa Valley for drunk driving this weekend after he crashed his 2021 Porsche into another vehicle near one of the couple's multi-million dollar vineyards. After the accident, Paul Pelosi said he was confused, didn't know what he was doing, where he was going, and lost complete control which are also the exact same words Nancy Pelosi will be muttering right after this year's midterms. The field sobriety test consisted of the officer asking Paul Pelosi to stand on one leg and count backwards from one million of his inside trades. Paul Pelosi, worth close to $200 million, was released on $5,000 bail. Gee, I, I wonder where he was able to scrounge up the money. Was it in the glove compartment of the Porsche or the coffee cup holder near the stick? $5,000. It's always nice when the bail is cheaper than the bottle of wine you got arrested for drinking. Pelosi is in his 80s. That's Paul Pelosi, married to the speaker. Paul Pelosi is in his 80s and never worked an honest day in his life. This lazy sack of human excrement actually considers drinking and driving multitasking. That's how lazy a sack of human excrement Paul Pelosi is. He considers drinking and driving multitasking. Paul Pelosi's blood alcohol level registered higher than 0 0.08, which also happens to be his wife's latest approval ratings. Nancy Pelosi wasn't with him at the time of the accident. She was back east doing the people's business, taking on climate change, assault weapons, and income inequality by accepting an honorary degree from Brown University. Who says the Democrats are out of touch? Paul Pelosi crashes his Porsche while driving to one of his Napa Valley vineyards while his wife is giving a pep talk to one of the Ivies, and I don't mean Ivy Getty. Nancy Pelosi, if you'll remember, was late for that big climate summit last year because she had to stop off in San Francisco to officiate the wedding of oil heiress Ivy Getty. Like I said, who says the Democratic Party is out of touch with the working people? Speaking to graduates of Brown University, Speaker Pelosi addressed the world's problems by telling graduates to, quote, heal America's fractured soul. Brown costs $75,000 a year. That's exactly what these kids are focused on. What? I'm frozen. God damn it. Uh, can you hear me at least? Audio's All right. My face is frozen. Hey, how ironic. My face is frozen when I'm talking about Nancy Pelosi. This isn't Botox, folks. Is it fixed? Okay. Unlike Nancy Pelosi, my face is frozen from a bad internet connection. Not too much Botox. Uh, but you were able to hear me, right, honey? Okay. Uh, I only say honey publicly. It makes me sound uh, like a good person. Uh, so anyway, Nancy Pelosi uh, 
told uh, the kids from Brown who pay $75,000 a year for tuition. She said that uh, you uh, have to focus on healing America's fractured soul. That, that's the very first thing on their mind right now, those students. That's why they chose Brown to heal America's fractured soul at $75,000 a year. On behalf of every student not attending an elite college, hey, Nancy Pelosi, instead of my soul, how about you healed my fractured student debt with your two vineyards? You have a vineyard for each $100 million that you have. Anyway, back to her criminal husband, Paul Pelosi. People are saying it's not fair to judge Nancy Pelosi by the actions of her husband. Right. He just happens to have been uh, lucky enough to get a $200 million stock and real estate portfolio. It just happened. It had absolutely nothing to do with Nancy Pelosi's career as Speaker of the House. In fact, many of you don't know this, but the couple only lives on the money Nancy makes as Speaker of the House. You know, all those vineyards they own, they bought them from her salary as Speaker of the House. They're a regular Herbert and Dorothy Vogel. Herbert and Dorothy Vogel, look them up. Before being administered, uh, before being administered the field sobriety test, Paul Pelosi called Nancy on the phone and said, honey, it's me, your inside trader idiot of a husband, Paul. You know how you always complain that you're the one who has all the inside information? Well, guess what, honey? Now I got some inside information for you. Call our broker. You ready? Guess who's just about to get arrested for drunk driving? Me. That's right. Me. And you say I never do anything all by myself. I'm just about to get arrested for drunk driving. So call the broker. This is inside information. You're hearing it first. We're going to make a for and tell the kids, tell the kids no reason they shouldn't dip their beak too. OK, honey, I love you almost as much as I love our two hundred million dollars. Wow, what a family, huh? And the, 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 they represent the Democrats. They're supposed to speak for the working man. A spokesman for the Pelosi family denied Paul Pelosi has a drinking problem and said the reason Paul Pelosi always looks completely shit faced is from all that time spent kissing Jeff Bezos's ass. Listeners to this show will recall that Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul, spent the past year trading millions of dollars of stock in Amazon, Google and Apple, big tech companies that are subject to regulation by his wife. You know, in in Paul Pelosi's defense, you really don't need inside information uh, to trade on the fact that Speaker Pelosi and the Democrats will never, ever do anything to rein in Silicon Valley. I mean, what's this idiot asking his wife before they got her, before they go to bed? Hey, honey, got any inside skinny for me? Are you going to do nothing about big tech or are you planning to do absolutely nothing about big tech? That's what the Democrats do. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nancy Pelosi and her husband couldn't even be bothered to show up in Uvalde, Texas for the funerals. She's busy picking up honorary degrees at an Ivy League university while he's getting pickled at one of his vineyards while the rest of us are burying school children. That's how much Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi cares about America. Shahidforchange.com U.S. Go to shahidforchange.us. He's running against Nancy Pelosi. She won't debate him. He's running third party. It's time to get rid of Nancy Pelosi, her husband, as well as the entire Democratic leadership. We're bearing school children and Nancy Pelosi and her husband are parting it up. Anybody ever check on the workers at Paul and Nancy Pelosi's vineyards? They have, I think, at least two vineyards. You would think the media would uh, find out about the people who pick their grapes. Are they United Farm Workers? I'd like to know.
because this is the Democrats. This is who we rely on for Medicare for all, the PRO Act, universal background checks for guns. We depend on them for addressing climate change, and they couldn't care less. Did I ever mention that Charles Schumer, Chuck Schumer, my senator, Senate Majority Leader and Democrat, did I ever mention that Chuck Schumer's two daughters graduated from Harvard Law and are now lobbyists for Amazon and Facebook? Did I ever mention that? And I haven't even touched the type of law our vice president's husband, Doug Jagoff, practiced in Hollywood. That they're sitting on. When you find out what first husband Doug Jagoff did as a lawyer in Hollywood, just when you think you can't hate the vice president anymore, wait till you look into, wait till they look into Jug, Doug Jagoff's law practice. And Joe Biden, what can I tell you that won't come out in the six impeachment trials scheduled for 2023 once Nancy Pelosi loses the House? I wonder why she's so unpopular. Hmm. Well, do I sound angry? Yeah, it's it's better to be angry than depressed. And people are really angry all over America. And they're, they're angry at our cops. I've never seen anything like this before. That Uvalde, Texas police chief now has two officers stationed outside his home sitting in a patrol car. His cops will keep him perfectly safe, unless, of course, an armed intruder brandishing an assault weapon storms inside that house. Then the chief's completely on his own for at least an hour. This week, this was the week America woke up and finally realized the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good armor plated robot guy with a gun. Nobody's going in. Nobody. You can't pay anybody enough to go in and take on an AR-15. Half that town's budget went for police. Had the town's entire budget gone for police, the cops still would have been too terrified to confront a semi-automatic assault weapon designed to butcher a nest of enemy snipers. The conversation on mass shootings shifted dramatically last week. For the first time, the right is shamelessly blaming our cops for Tuesday's staggering body count. Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott said of his police officer's lackadaisical response that he's quote unquote livid because he couldn't possibly blame his precious assault weapons or the laws he has passed that make AR-15s easier for an 18-year-old to purchase than a pack of cigarettes. Greg Abbott, Abbott is livid, and he's going to do something about this. What's he going to do? He's going to blame the police. That's what Republicans do when they are wrong. They send out a posse searching for a scapegoat. They found one. It's our pusillanimous cops. I hope I didn't pronounce pusillanimous right. Uh, yes, the cops, they're the ones to blame for all those dead school children. And so this past week and moving forward, America has been promised from now on, every police officer has been put on notice that when there's an active shooter, do not wait for the SWAT team. Go in there, go in there with the weapons you have, not the weapons you wish you had. Starting now, the rules of engagement, engagement couldn't be more explicit. All cops are expected to walk directly into a shower of bullets. Failure to do so will render them cowards and legally liable. From now on, mass shootings are the fault of our police. Those are not my words. Those are the words of Republican governors, Republican mayors, police sheriffs, the NRA and NRA owned politicians throughout Texas 
and America. Those are not my words. It's not the guns. It's the cowardly police not wanting to get ripped apart by an AR-15. Nice, nice. But maybe, just maybe, the real cowards are America's police chiefs. Maybe the real cowards are America's police unions. Maybe our police chiefs and police unions are too chicken shit to take on the NRA and all those gun manufacturers who shower the police chiefs and the police unions with money, vacations, side hustles, and other assorted goodies. Maybe American police chiefs and police unions don't really care that their officers are unhinged from these assault weapons flooding our streets. Maybe American police chiefs and police unions are as afraid of the NRA as our cops are of getting blown apart by weapons of war. Police chiefs and police unions wield enormous political power. Republicans, especially Republicans, are terrified of police unions. They are terrified of police chiefs because Republicans purport to be the party of law and order. So they desperately need the police chiefs and the police unions on their side. So until American police chiefs and police unions stand up to the National Rifle Association, until they stop taking money from gun manufacturers, we need to hold them responsible for every single mass shooting going forward. The cops aren't cowards. Police chiefs and police unions are. They're too chicken shit to stand up to the NRA. Police chiefs and police unions are the cowards for not demanding an assault weapons ban. It doesn't have to be this way, and it wasn't. This wasn't always the case. Our police chiefs, our police unions demanded gun control until the NRA panicked and purchased their silence. You see, police chiefs and the police unions, they spoke up in 1994, and that's exactly how America ended up with the assault weapons ban. It was the police chiefs and the, and the unions who stood behind Bill Clinton and the Democrats to help get it passed. It's really hard for the right wing to take on the police chiefs and the police unions. And so that scared the NRA. In 1994, the NRA got terrified of police chiefs and police unions. So they began pouring money into police unions and police departments to purchase their political clout. Mostly their silence when it comes to the assault weapons ban. 10 years later, 2004, police chiefs and union heads sat back and said nothing as the assault weapons ban expired and the number of mass shootings exploded. It's been nearly 20 years, hard to believe, it's been nearly 20 years since the assault weapons ban expired. And since then, the NRA has created a new breed of cop. The NRA has created a new breed of school children, one with targets on their backs, knowing nobody cares. And it's made the cops and the kids sick in the head. And now, the new directive, loud and clear, police must not wait for the SWAT team. Cops are teaching children to play dead, to dip their hands in their friend's blood so it looks like they've already been hit. This is deranged. America is demented. Republicans are now insisting the mentally ill shouldn't be allowed to buy a gun. Well. Thanks to the NRA, our entire country now falls into that categorization. Our minds are defective. This whole country is mentally ill because of the guns. We have PTSD. So none of us 
should be allowed to purchase a gun. What kind of twisted people would order police officers to run into a barrage of bullets pouring out of an AR-15? Where are the police chiefs and the police unions on this? At one time, before the NRA got their hands on the police unions and the police chiefs, the police chiefs and the police unions used to speak for the cops, not the gun manufacturers. Think about this new directive for a second. Think about this. Police, police must now run into the line of fire without protection and confront an active shooter, even when that officer is completely outgunned. Otherwise, they are cowards who are legally liable. Now, I talked about this last week. Former Broward County Deputy Scott Peterson was arrested on 11 criminal charges, including child neglect and negligence. And he's going on trial this year for not pursuing the shooter who fired that assault weapon inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, where 17 people were eventually killed. It's the police officer's fault. That's the only person who's been on trial because of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting the police officer, not the people who make the AR-15s, not the people who sold the shooter the AR-15s, just the police officer and the shooter. In America, we put the cop on trial for not chasing after a shooter, but you cannot arrest or even sue the crackpot who sold another crackpot an AR-15. The fact that we allow this is dispositive that not a single American possesses the compost mentis to own a gun. Let me repeat that because that's very uh, fancy language that I'm proud of. And whenever I use fancy language, it belies the fact that I have nothing important to say. So I'd rather have you be impressed by my legalese than what I'm saying, because what I'm saying is garbage. I use flowery, flowery, flowery language to obfuscate the fact that I have nothing to say. So let me read this again. The fact that we allow this is dispositive that not a single American possesses the compost mentis to own a gun. I don't care if most of you don't understand what I'm saying. That makes me look smart and I need to look smart because I have nothing to say. I use the word dispositive and compost mentis. So you people should be impressed. I hate everybody, mostly myself. What kind of sick country, what kind of sick country would rather protect gun manufacturers than its own cops and children? The mentally ill, Republicans say, shouldn't be allowed to purchase a gun, fine. That means all of us should not be allowed to purchase a gun. We are all sick. I believe we lack the compost mentis to own a gun. It's time for American police chiefs and police unions to say their officers, just like our school children, refuse to be cannon fodder for gun manufacturers.